This is a video going over the notes for classifying chemical reactions. The purpose of this video is to help you categorize different chemical reactions and by doing that you can predict some of the, the reactants or products for certain types of reactions, the ones we're going to go over here. Um, this video will not go in detail on how to balance those equations. Um, I'll do that very quickly and it does not also go into great detail on how to write correct formulas for compounds. There are other videos on that that you'll need to refer to. Um, even without going into detail on those, the video will still be quite long, um, so be sure to pause whenever you need to to fill in your notes um, or to try to figure out answers to questions you might have. Okay. So we're going to start out with um, a synthesis, synthesis reaction or combination reaction. This is like the name implies synthesis, means you're combining things um, to make a new product. And the way that you recognize a synthesis reaction um, is that you make one product. So it says a compound is made, a single compound is made from simpler substances. Usually those simpler substances are elements, and if you were going to predict what those uh, reactants were, you would assume that they are elements. But sometimes if you're just given the reaction and you're asked to classify it, it might be synthesis even when it doesn't have elements, um, but as long as they're simpler. So this is the general equation for a synthesis reaction, so I want to make sure you understand how to read this. Um, you'll see these for every type of reaction we're going to cover today. So um, when it says AB, like it does on the product side here, so this I know is a synthesis reaction because there's just one product, and the product is AB. When it says AB, that tells me it's a compound composed of both A and B. On the reactant side, I see two elements, right, because I have element A and element B. So when you have single letters, those would represent elements. If you have a combination of letters, those represent compounds. So again, the main takeaway for synthesis, you know it's synthesis when it has one product. So if you want to write that in your notes, that would be a good thing to jot down. So two examples of synthesis reactions. Here's one. So we have, we're given these um, reactants. We have sodium, the element sodium, and the element chlorine. Why is there a two there for chlorine? It is diatomic. Remember I said you have to remember your diatomic elements. The phases are just the phases from the periodic table for those elements. Okay. Since we're going to form one product, it's going to be the combination of these two elements. So you have to think about the charges, right? If they become ionic compounds um, or ions, you'll have Na plus and Cl minus. So when you combine those, you get NaCl. Okay. Um, it's going to be a solid. You would either be given that, um, or, or if you're just asked to predict synthesis, you can um, assume that the product will be solid. But um, for, I think for most of your homework, you're given any compound uh, phases or it'll tell you in the homework in some way. Okay, and then we would balance, so we'll do this really quickly. Na, one Na on the left, one a Na on the right, so those are good. I have two Cl's here. I only have one here, so I need a two right there. Okay, so that's that reaction. It's actually a, quite an, a violent reaction. <laughs> um, I'll also provide, I'll try to provide some videos for a lot of these. Um, this is usually when I do a bunch of demos, but I have videos of those demos, uh, and I'll try to keep it interesting and give you some weird stories for a lot of these. Um, oh, and then once we put that to there, um, it's going to affect the uh, sodiums, so we need a two there. Don't want to forget that. Okay, so that's the first example. Second example, we have magnesium metal and oxygen gas. All why is there two there? Also diatomic, so see how important it is to remember your diatomic elements. All right, so when we combine these, magnesium and oxygen, think about their charges. The one product we will get is magnesium oxide, which has the formula MgO. All right, so to balance this one, Mg, Mg, those are good. I have two O's here. I have one O, so I need a two there. That's also going to change my Mg's. So now I have two magnesium, so I need to go back here and put a two there. Um, so I do have a video for this one, and I believe I did a, for some classes I did a really quick version of this. Um, this is also a type of another reaction we're going to learn called combustion, so it, it produces a, a lot of light, as you'll see. 
Um, so I have magnesium metal and I'm going to light it with the Bunsen burner in this video and you will see the result. And the result is I'm producing magnesium oxide. So I have magnesium metal reacting with oxygen in the air and you'll hear the um, reaction from the crowd here. But again, don't, look, look, don't look directly at it. Oh, hold on, look at it. Oh my God. All right, so I know it's hard to tell, but it lit up the whole classroom. It was completely dark, and then that light from the magnesium oxide um, reaction produced a lot of light. Um, so that's an example of a synthesis and also a combustion, but we'll talk more about that later. All right, second type is decomposition reactions, also called analysis reactions. These are essentially the opposite of synthesis. So a compound is taken and it's broken down into simpler substances. Again, usually that means elements, but it could also mean simpler compounds. So the general formula, it should look kind of familiar. It's just the synthesis reaction, but flipped. So this time, the way you would recognize decomposition is it only has one reactant. So remember that represents a compound. And then over here, we have two elements, okay? So you have a compound, one compound as the reactant is how you would recognize a decomposition reaction. So here's an example. We have water, H2O. So if we're given that as the one reactant, what we would do to predict the products is we would just take each of those separate elements and write the formulas for those. But be careful with this one. Um, so you need to have hydrogen and oxygen. So think about what the formulas would be for hydrogen and oxygen it's not going to be H and O, right? They're both diatomic, so it's going to be H2 and O2. All right, so be careful with that. And then we would balance. So we have two H's, two H's, um, one O here, but I have two O's over here. So to fix that, I'll put a two in front of the H2O, uh, but that also changes my H's. So two times two gives me four H's on the left, so to give four H's on the right, I need to put a two in front there, okay? So that is the decomposition of water. It's how you could get hydrogen and oxygen gas from water. Um, the second one is a more complicated looking one. This is uh, sucrose. This is sugar, like table sugar. So C12H22O11. Don't be scared. It'll be pretty easy to balance. Um, and what we're going to do, this one actually doesn't break down into its elements. It'll just be like it says up here, simpler substances. So in this case, it's going to be carbon and water, but in the form of gas. Um, and we have a video of this, so I'll kind of show you what this looks like. Um, but to balance, we have 12 Cs. So I need to put 12 here. Balance my carbons. Let's go to Hs, 22 Hs. So I have two H's here, so think about, remember they multiply, so I'll need an 11 here, right? And then that gives me 11 O's, and look at that, 11 O's, so it's all good. All right, so this is an interesting reaction, which I'm going to show you a video of that I have. Um, it basically is saying that you have table sugar decomposing into carbon and steam, right? So uh, you've, you have sugar at your house, probably, and you've probably never seen it turn into carbon. Um, if you can think of what carbon looks like, it's like if you have a campfire and then after the fire burns, all that black charred wood that you have, that's essentially pure carbon. Uh, usually your table sugar does not do that. However, if you use a catalyst, um, which a catalyst is something that makes a reaction go faster and it's not actually, it doesn't actually participate in the reaction, but my catalyst here is going to be sulfuric acid, which is a really nasty acid. But I'm going to add sulfuric acid to this table sugar here. This is just table sugar. And as I mix it up, you'll start to see it looks kind of gross already. I've sped this up because it does take some time. Uh, but this was a demo I did a couple years ago for um, one of the chemistry classes. So you'll see it's already starting to kind of turn a different color. Uh, but then some kind of cool stuff will happen. And it's kind of nasty. So we did it in the fume hood because we used that sulfuric acid. It, it can be very dangerous. Um, but you'll see here, it is forming carbon. So that column that starts climbing up is just pure carbon. And you can kind of see some of the steam was coming out there. Um, at the end, it was so hot, you can see all that steam that's generated. So that's the water vapor, okay? So that's a decomposition reaction, aided by sulfuric acid in that case, okay? So those are the first two. Um, remember, you can always pause the video or go back and rewatch. We're gonna be covering a lot of reactions in this video. Okay. Um, single replacement reactions are next, or single displacement. There are two types that you need to know. They're very similar, 
uh, and the mechanism is the same, but they're slightly different. So first we're going to talk about cationic. So single replacement reactions um, is when one element that's alone will switch places with another element that's in a compound. Uh, I like to use the sad, sad example. There's some like dating stories here, some sad dating stories. So this sad dating story would be like if um, a couple goes on a date, okay, and then they bring a friend along, and the friend's by themselves, but then actually the friend ends up swooping in and, and stealing the date, okay? So the friend who came alone ends up leaving with the date, and now one of the people on the date is now alone. That's essentially what happens, okay? I know it's very sad. So here's the general equation for a cationic single replacement reaction. And you can kind of see the story here. So here's the couple on a date, right? Here's the friend. And what's going to happen is the friend is going to swoop in and kick B out of the date. So now B ends up alone, and A is now on the date with C. The important thing to remember here, and the reason this one is cationic, is because remember when we write an ionic uh, formula, the cation always comes first. So this would happen when whatever this element is can become a cation. So it would be like a metal, right? A metal will become a cation. So if you have a metal here, it's going to replace the cation, right? So an example of this, we have aluminum. So aluminum is like the friend, right? And aluminum is a metal, so we know it will become a cation. And then you have copper and sulfate on a date, okay? So what's going to happen, aluminum is going to go in and kick out copper on the date. They will switch places and then copper will be by itself and aluminum gets to be on the date with sulfate now. Swooped in and stole the date. The tricky thing with these though is now that aluminum is coupled up with sulfate, you have to think about what the formula will be, right? Here, copper had a charge of positive 2 and sulfate had a charge of negative 2. So that's why its formula is CuSO4. When aluminum pairs up with sulfate, though, aluminum will have a charge of positive 3. You can check your ions list. So you have to think about that when you pair it up with sulfate, which has a charge of negative 2. So you'll actually end up get this, getting this formula, Al2, SO4, 3. Again, there are other videos for you to review your ionic formulas. So refer to those if that's confusing. Okay, And then we would need to balance. And then notice copper, sad, sad copper is all by itself now. Um, phases, again, if it's an element, it's from the periodic table. Otherwise, you'll be told in your homework. Okay. Um, so then we would balance. So aluminums, I have one here. I have two over here. So let's put a two right in front of aluminum. Coppers, I have one copper, one copper, so that's good. Sulfate, remember, we'll chunk the polyatomic, so I have one sulfate here. Over here, I have three sulfates, so we'll put a three here. And then by doing that three, it's also going to change my coppers, right? Remember, this is a back and forth, so then I have to go here and change my coppers to three, right? And that is our balanced cationic single replacement reaction. So I think I have a video for this one. So this is a video from a while ago when I was student teaching. We did a little um, experiment where we put, took aluminum foil. Okay, so that's the aluminum. That's the friend, right? And um, copper sulfate is this blue solution. Remember it said it was aqueous. So that's the blue solution. The reason it's blue is because copper ions are actually blue. So if you see a blue solution in a chemistry lab, a lot of times it's because it has copper ions in it. So I'm going to turn this um, on, and it's time-lapsed here. It's going to go fast. You'll notice quite a few changes here. The aluminum foil is starting to turn like a brown-red color, okay? And then you can kind of see here that the solution, there's me in the background, the solution is turning clear, okay? So those are two changes to recognize. The reason that's happening is remember what's happening in the story. Aluminum is going in and kicking out the copper ions that are on the date with sulfate, right? So what happens here is the, the reason it's turning brown-red here is because you're actually making copper. If you look at the equation, right, copper, the solid metal copper is being produced, and that's what you see here, okay? And then the reason the solution gets clear is because now since that copper is the element copper here, it's no longer in the solution as ions, so it doesn't have the blue color anymore. So it's a really cool um, little reaction. All right. The other type of single replacement reaction is anionic. Same thing, one element's going to go in and soup the date, right? But this time, the element that's by itself will become an anion. So when it switches places, when it goes in to steal the date, it's going to switch places with the anion that's in the compound.
So you can see it's slightly different if you want to make a little note of that. Okay, so the example here for anion, anionic single replacement is chlorine is the friend and um, sodium bromide is the compound on a date together. So chlorine, which one is it going to replace? Is it going to replace the Na or the Br? Right? Hopefully you said Br. Yeah, as long as you remember that every compound needs to have a cation and an anion, then you'll be fine. Okay? So Cl has to kick out the Br and we'll end up getting this. So again, remember Cl2, Br2, that's because they're diatomic. But then when they're paired up with sodium, you have to think about their charges. So there's a, there's a lot going on there. Um, and then we need to balance. So I have two CLs here. So I have one CL on this side, so I need a two there, which then changes my sodiums to two. So I have to fix that here. I'll put a two there, which then changes my bromines, my BRs. So I have to go here and make two. Oh, but there's already two. And then we're good. Um, this one I do not have a video for, I'm sorry, but I have a funny slide for you here. So again, single replacement, it's like the sad dating story, just like this one, right? Jennifer Aniston used to be with Brad Pitt here, so they were, they were the compound, right? And then Angelina Jolie was the element. This is the classic single replacement story, right? Um, Angelina Jolie is actually going to swoop in and steal the date, um, and now Jennifer Aniston is the element all by herself, and this is the new compound, right? So just remember that. It'll help you. All right, number four, double replacement reactions or double displacement reactions. Um, the weird dating story that goes along with this one is you go on a double date, all right? You and your friend go on a double date with your dates, and then you end up liking the other date more, so you switch dates, that's what happens. Everyone still has a date at the end, so everyone's happy. Um, but here you have two compounds and they switch partners. Again, you have to make sure though that every compound has a cation and an anion. As long as you make sure that that happens, there's only one possible way to do the switch. Okay. Um, so there's two types, precipitation and neutralization. So let's talk about precipitation first. Precipitation is called precipitation because it forms a solid. One of the products will be solid. And if you remember when we do our labs, what we call that when we do a reaction and we, we form a solid, we call that a precipitate. You might remember PPT. Um, so that's a precipitation reaction. You've done lots of these. So here's what it looks like. Okay. So here's our double date setup. Okay. So we've got lead two and nitrate on a date. They're one couple. And then we've got potassium and iodide as a couple. So we have two couples on a double date. They're going to switch partners, but again, be careful. You need to make sure you pair up a cation and an anion. So you can think of it like this, lead, just switch lead and potassium, just switch those. But you have to think about the new couple, when it forms, uh, they have to balance the charges with the new partner. So K is gonna be partnered with NO3, and PB is gonna be paired with I, um, but make sure you balance charges. So again, there's another video that goes over this. These would be the new compounds with their charges balanced. And then we will balance the entire equation. So PB, PB is good. Um, nitrates, I have two nitrates here. I have one over here, so let's put a two there. And then that changes my potassiums, so I need a two there. That changes my iodines, but I already have two, so then it's good. So remember, the reason this one's called a precipitation reaction is because if you look here, and your homework will go over this, um, but it says solid. So you formed a precipitate, PPT. So that's a precipitation when one of the products in this double replacement is a solid. That would be what you see in your lab when you get that solid. And I have a video of this, actually. So you have two solutions. They look the same, right? But one's lead to nitrate and one's potassium iodide. Both clear solutions. When you mix them together, you've actually done this in the lab, you've done this, um, you get a yellow PPT, yellow precipitate, okay? So that's what you would see when you do that double replacement reaction. The other type of double replacement reaction is neutralization, um, and this occurs when one of the products is water. So here's an example. Uh, same 
me mechanism, okay? And actually, you don't need to know this, but this is just kind of interesting. A neutralization reaction is an acid-base reaction. If you've ever heard that acids and bases will neutralize, that's this is what that means, okay? You don't have to know this at this point. We haven't talked about acids and bases, but hydrochloric acid, you know that's an acid. Um, I'm telling you now, sodium hydroxide, that's a base. So when we combine them, you'll see why they neutralize, right? So if we have these two couples on the double date, just switch them, right? So switch the Na and the H. So that's going to put Na with Cl, which you know, that's sodium chloride, right? And then H is going to be paired with OH, which if you think about how to rearrange that, HOH, right, what would you get? You get H2O. H2O over here, right? So you don't write HOH, you write H2O. So that's water. And this is why it's neutralization, because you take an acid and you take a base, and all you get is water with some salt in it. Okay? So the way you recognize neutralization is that one of the products is H2O, and that would be a liquid. Okay? Um, this one, I don't have a video because it would be extremely boring to watch. You would take two clear solutions, mix them together, and you get a clear solution, salt water. However, if you did this in the lab, it would actually get warm. And that's how you would know that the reaction happened. It's an exothermic reaction, and it releases heat. So you could know that the reaction happened that way. But you wouldn't see anything. Okay. The last type, everyone's favorite, combustion. Combustion is when something reacts with oxygen to produce energy and light. So anytime you think of an explosion or something burning, that's a combustion reaction. So that's why students tend to like this one. Okay. The general equation for this one is very general. All it says is that you take some, some reactants, it reacts with oxygen, and then you make some products. The key here, though, is that it also produces energy and light. So if you didn't see the reaction, if it was just written down, uh, you actually wouldn't be able to tell if it's combustion or not. It has, it has to give you this information somehow, or you have to see it. Okay, but there is one type of combustion reaction that you have to know is combustion. So you need to make sure you are familiar with this reaction. This is a specific type of combustion for combustion of a hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbon just means it contains carbon and hydrogen. It may or may not have oxygen here. So I put X, Y, Z because these could have any number of carbons or hydrogens or oxygens, or it doesn't have to have oxygen at all. But when one of those hydrocarbons reacts with oxygen, you always get the same two products, which this seems weird, but you always get carbon dioxide, CO2, and H2O, water, always. So this is very typical of different types of explosions you see. Um, they'll, they'll produce carbon dioxide gas and water vapor. And that's why a lot of times you see some condensation uh, in the container. So you have to know this one. You'll see all different variations of this, and we'll do two examples uh, here. We're going to do that one second. We'll come back to this one. Okay, example one. So we have this is ethanol. And then, so you'll see it's, you know, there's different numbers here. They've broken up the OH. You don't have to know why that is, but you do have to count it. Um, and then we have O2. Always going to be the same two products, CO2 and H2O. It doesn't matter what numbers are here. It's always going to be CO2 and H2O. And then we'll balance. So two carbons. So I need a two there, right? Let's do hydrogens next. So I have six hydrogens here. So how can we make this six hydrogens? Put three, right? And then oxygens. So I have two times two is four oxygens there. Plus the three there gives me seven oxygens. Over here, be careful. It's not just this, right? There's actually one oxygen there. So if you have one oxygen there, that takes care of one. So then you need to make this six oxygens. And we can do that easily by putting a three there, okay? So this one, I have a video for this. Uh, this is the combustion of ethanol. And you can do a cool, it's called a whoosh bottle. I didn't do this one. This one's from YouTube. Here it is. Here, whoosh bottle. All right, so to do that, they took this bottle, this glass bottle, and they filled it with ethanol and then dumped it out. So it just has like the vapor of ethanol, uh, which is like kind of your basic alcohol. Um, and, then, and then they lit that on fire. So it's all the ethanol vapor. Um, let's see, we'll watch it again. Here, whoosh bottle. 
Pretty cool. You can Google some other classic demos. And then the last one, which we already accidentally saw, that was my bad. Um, the last example is the combustion of um, methane. So CH4 is methane gas, which is the gas we have in our labs when we do Bunsen burners, when we use Bunsen burners. Um, so again, we have some type of hydrocarbon, right, reacting with oxygen. So what will the products be? Always the same products, CO2 and H2O, and then you just need to balance it, right? But look, the products are always going to be the same. It's just different amounts. So carbon, that one's already balanced. Hydrogen, I have four. Here I only have two, so let's put a two there. And then oxygens, I have two here plus two there. So a total of four oxygens on the product side. So to make this four, we'll put a two there. So this one I usually do as a demo. I fill a coffee can with methane gas, and then I light the top of it. There's a little hole, so I light it on fire, and it's like a little candle. Um, and then it just burns in the dark for a little bit, and then we'll see what happens at the end right here. All right, so once there's enough oxygen built up inside of the can where the flame can burn inside the can, it goes in there, reacts with the methane that's in the can, and causes an explosion. And here's your, your meme. Um, remember that water is one of the products of combustion. Always CO2 and H2O. Okay, so just a really quick rundown. All the reactions we learned. Synthesis, the way you recognize synthesis is that it has one product. Decomposition, the way you recognize that, it has one reactant. So it's like the opposite of synthesis. Single replacement, you will recognize because it has one compound and one element. Remember, that's the sad dating story where your friend steals your date. You have cationic and anionic, the two different types. Double replacement, this is where you have two compounds. So remember, this is like the double date where you switch partners. You can either form a precipitate or water, and that gives you the two types of double replacement. Last would be combustion, where you have something reacting with oxygen to produce energy and light. Remember that the combustion of a hydrocarbon is the really important one that you need to know. It always produces carbon dioxide and water. A lot of the chemical reactions won't fit these types, so just be on the lookout for these, and if it doesn't, sometimes different um, things online, if you see a reaction, it won't actually fit one of these. Um, but for your homework, they will all be in one of these categories. Okay, so this is what your homework looks like. I'm not going to do it. There's a there's a tutorial video that goes over it a lot. But I just want to really quickly run through like how you'll start to categorize these. So for example, number one, I see two compounds. So that tells me right away it's a double replacement reaction. Number two, I see an element and a compound. So that's like the sad dating story. That's a single replacement, right? Number three, I have one product, so that's going to be a synthesis reaction, okay? Number four, I see two compounds again, so that's another double replacement. Number five is an element and a compound, single replacement. Um, six, you have one reactant, so that's going to be decomposition, right? So that's how you're going to go through your homework. You're going to fill in. You'll do this in your notebook. Um, write out the equation, and then you will fill in the missing pieces and balance it, and you'll categorize the reaction type. All right? So check out the tutorial video for that. Um, you can rewatch this. I'm sorry it was kind of long this time. Um, there's a lot to cover, um, and then we'll have our Q&A session, and you can always email me with questions as well.